everybody thinks I can do this. No problem. I can do this. No problem. You know, it's just, it's just ordering some tables. It's just ordering some chips. It's all that stuff. But you know, one of the conversations that, that come up ultimately is the poker room director is responsible for knowing all the regs and all the legal jargon. And can you talk a little bit about what it's like? Like I, I was, I was literally picturing you when you were describing it to me with like a cartoon clothes hangers with your eyes open, like reading all this stuff. <laughs> Can you just can you talk a little bit about like what do you need to what do you need to be able to do in order to do this job? Yeah, here's the proposed regs right here, and it's uh, it's it's not light reading. For example, everything is underlined because actually every every single word in here is underlined because it's all brand new. That's that's mm -hmm. what I've been told. If it's underlined, it's brand new. Um, so I wouldn't say close hangers per se, but like yeah, you need something to prop your eyes open, kind of like uh, Clockwork Orange, you know. Um, you have to read it and you have, you can't get bored with it. You have to take your time through it and go through every fine detail, which I've done quite a bit over the last few months. Um, to give you a little bit of background, uh, I'm working with Chuck Lesson and Akiva Lesson. Uh, Pops is a family owned business. Um, Chuck and Judy have been running uh, Pops for, I think, the better part of 30 years or so. Um, it's, it's a bingo operation. Uh, predominantly, that's how it started. Uh, it also had so it's a charitable gaming facility in Virginia. Bingo is up until this point has been the only type of charitable gaming that we could have. And so we had bingo for years. I grew up, you know, knowing about bingo at the, you know, you have it at temples or synagogues. It was all for charitable gaming, not for profit, but charitable. Um, Pops took advantage of that situation, a need to provide bingo to people and to provide a charitable outlet for certain organizations. If you were a 501c3, or I should say 501c, a, a church or synagogue, a VFW, uh, Moose, Elk Lodges, things like that, all could take advantage of bingo. And Chuck Lesson, who is the chairman of the board of the Charitable Gaming Board in Virginia, has been working on this poker bill for about five years. And wow. We just got it passed this year. It went into effect July 1st. Currently, we're waiting the regulations to work themselves out. Um, with any given law, you're going to have specifics to the law that are not going to be included in the original law. I mean, for example, you could say, all right, we're going to have speed limits in the state of Virginia. Furthermore, you could say we're going to put 50, 55 as the highway and 45 as a main road and 35 as a secondary road and 25 for river residential areas, but you're not going to put specifically that Patterson Avenue is 45 up until this street and then 35 beyond that street. You know, these are specifics that have to be included in a regulation type of definition. And so we have the same thing in poker. We have some, some main bill that was passed, which is called Senate Bill 936. And now we're working through regulations that more clearly define how poker is going to be played in Virginia. And that's where we're currently, we're hopefully the regulations will be done later this month. So, so first of all, that's a fascinating bit of insight. And for anybody watching right now, you can clearly see what's required to be the person running a poker room, right? It's, it's, it's a lot more than just poker. Um, and there's a lot of responsibility there. And, you know, I, back in 2009, I was a part of a, a three person team that opened up a poker room in South Florida. And I was not the one responsible for the regs, but I did get to hear a lot of this stuff. And I'm hearing again from you and it's a lot, right? Like there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. A lot of, um, just, there's, there's a lot is the simplest way to say it. There, you know, it's it's interesting. There's a really great tradition here in Virginia with, with bingo going back long before Pops even. Uh, I, I'm, I'm told it's over 50 years. I, I don't know the exact number. You can imagine that after they've developed, they've developed this over a period of years to where they've got it so fine tuned. If you're doing bingo, they know every square inch of that business. And even still, they still come up with new things every year, like a progressive jackpot, how that will be run or how this run. And they have these different things. They bring these ideas up to a board and they pass them. And this is after 50 plus years of doing regulations. Here we are in Virginia. They just passed the law. They're just now coming out with the first set of regulations. So there's still a lot of unknowns. There are a lot of things that aren't even covered under the regulations because they haven't thought to cover them yet. And then there are things that maybe they're covering that are a little overly strict or a little overburdening that maybe they need to loosen up one and fix for the future. So it's interesting how, um, you know, this first year is going to be because it's a little bit in some ways uh, restrictive 
and yet unrestricted in certain ways. Yeah, and it, it's it's really cool to hear that. I mean, you know, stuff was passed, right? I mean, at the, at the end of the day, it was passed. And now here you guys are, right? So